we're pleased to have uh, Governor Neil Abercrombie here with us uh, with us this afternoon, and I'd like to introduce Neil and see if he could share with us a few words. Aloha, everybody. Aloha. I thought I was uh, at a rehearsal for Saturday Night Live when I said hello to Senator Akaka. He said, because you look fabulous. <laughs> well, maybe we are uh, at a rehearsal for something, I think, today of uh, great import. Uh, it's very interesting that uh, on occasion, I get to uh, make opening remarks, and then on other occasions, you get to make closing remarks, is what they say. Usually, it's accompanied by uh, a, uh, uh, something that precedes the word remarks. The word brief is it generally associated with it. And uh, in as much as everyone here is in love with language, uh, I think uh, the emphasis on the word brief is generally greeted with uh, just smiles and uh, approval, just as I noticed when I said it this time. Everybody nodded their heads and, and said, yes, that's the way to do it. Uh, but in some respects, I, I, I will be uh, a brief about it. Uh, but nonetheless, uh, I want you to know how heartfelt uh, it is. It, when when uh, I first had the opportunity uh, to talk with, uh, with, with the dean and, 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 and with my wife, uh, Nancy Carraway, and then had the opportunity to uh, speak further with, uh, with Susan Duggan. Uh, I really was enthusiastic because it gave me an opportunity to distinguish for myself, yet once again, uh, the magic of language. And by that I mean, uh, in reference to the word magic, magic is by definition transformative. And we think of it that way. And the question is, is can we perform it? Can we perform magic? And words have that capacity. Uh, words in and of themselves can uh, obviously be neutral. Or they, can, they can be incomprehensible. Uh, if one is not a, a master or a mistress of language, uh, then one has no mastery, one has no capacity uh, to either know oneself or to uh, be able to comprehend the universe. It, and the universe itself then, the cast of the universe, of the universe, almost said the university, same thing in some <laughs> respects, uh, is as a result of language. Now, we're not the only animal on the earth, uh, the only species on the earth that has a language. Uh, uh, and a capacity to communicate with one another, surely. And some of the species, the other species with which we share the earth, have a very elaborate language uh, that they share. But only the human species has the capacity, let alone the desire, uh, to utilize language in very specific ways. First, to summarize and accumulate the wisdom of its past and those who have come before. To put it together, to organize it, to comprehend it, to analyze it, to judge it, and by extension themselves. Language gives us the opportunity to come to conclusions about ourselves. So we are able to accumulate the wisdom, such as it is, of the past. That's one thing. The other thing that human beings have, uh, unique from all other species, is to gather knowledge in order to project into the future, to actually extend the universe of our knowledge, to reach beyond ourselves of the moment, and the past into a future. 
to create the possibilities of other worlds and other perceptions in front of us. And the medium of all of this is language. The medium of all of this is language. If one has a mastery of language, one has a mastery of oneself. And the disability or inability to have a firm grip, perception, conception of language is the single limiting factor in whether we can utilize the knowledge accumulated to this point in our lives and in our history or whether we are able to project ourselves into a future, to establish a foundation in the future for what language can bring to us and for us and about us. When I first heard about this uh, summit, I was very, very excited. If there is any society on the face of the earth now that I believe more aware of what the diversity of language can bring to us. If there's anyone more prepared, more likely to be receptive than here in Hawaii, I don't know where it is. And the reason is, is that culturally, we're all well aware in Hawaii that our diversity defines us rather than divides us. It's something that from in my political life uh, is a, a fundamental uh, a characteristic of, uh, of, of information and, and in turn informs my whole perception of the world around me and certainly my role as governor. Our diversity defines us rather than divides us. And the people gathered here today at this summit know as well or better than anyone else that the diversity of our language defines us as human beings. Language is culture, culture is language. It's not a chicken and egg situation. Language is culture. And we see, we understand when we know about the diversity of languages, the diversity, the diversity of perceptions of what the world is, people see the world through different eyes. That's more than a cliche, it's a, it's a fundamental truism. And we see through different eyes because of the language that we bring to bear upon it. It was very interesting today for me to turn on the television set just about the time uh, that the new pope emerged uh, in Rome. And the first thing that was said to this pope, what is your name, Francis? Rippling across the great crowd gathered in St. Peter's, Francisco. It immediately sent throughout the world, certainly throughout the crowd, throughout Italy, and then throughout the world, the meaning of that word. The word now defines already people have in mind, have a vision, have a picture. Of, of, of Pope Francis, everything associated with, with Saint Francis. I have in my, in my, uh, in, in, in my uh, briefcase that I carry with me uh, all, all the time, uh, the poem, uh, the poem, the, uh, the words of Saint Francis, the, the prayer of Saint Francis, given to me by Sister Maureen Kelleher so many, many years ago when I came into the legislature as a, as a guide for me. Make me an instrument of your peace. Words define us as human beings. Words give us our perception of the world. Words disenable us sometimes from being able to be with one another. It can as easily divide us as unite us. So the diversity represented in this summit and the commitment to language in this summit, from my point of view as governor, and why I wanted to be here today was to indicate to you, it represents to me our commitment, not just to each other, but our commitment to the very spirit of aloha, 
that we say signifies the basic values of Hawaii. Where else, I think, anywhere in the world, is there such a diversity of celebration of origin and languages and cultures as there is in Hawaii? We glory in it. We're happy about it. We look forward to it. I know I do at the Caledonian Society, for example, because after all, uh, as, as is well known, a book has even been written about how the Scots saved the world. Yes, of course. But, It is an opportunity for me to express to you my support for what has taken place here today and what will take place in the future. Rest assured, to the degree and extent possible, I'm going to support what comes from the conference today, from the summit, and in time to come uh, with what transpires uh, as a result of, of the very extensive work that uh, the very extensive primitive work that I see uh, here. Uh, what really, what re what I really like about the digital age is, is, and one of the reasons I came today was I was just hoping, oh please make it as primitive as I am, in the way, because uh, uh, the closest I can get is the the world's oldest cell phone, uh, in order to keep in touch with my wife because I value domestic tranquility above all. <laughs> Would anybody care to define domestic tranquility uh, for me? I can tell you I know how to define it. And uh, uh, so I'm delighted to see this old-fashioned printing on paper on the, uh, uh, on the walls uh, around here. That with the smoke, yes, exactly, right, exactly. <laughs> we all, <laughs> yeah, precisely. And uh, really, it's quite true. Um, as, uh, as some of you know here, uh, who have known me for many, many, many years, is that my view of uh, scholarship is, is that we, we started going down as a species when we gave up quill pens and papyrus. Uh, but uh, uh, what, uh, what, the, the, what has, has uh, given us the, the capacity, though, for an understanding of, e of each other. And, this, and the diversity that's represented in the species, obviously, is mastery of language. And so the uh, roadmap, the Hawaii Language Roadmap uh, initiative, uh, is something that I feel uh, is part of a long-term effort uh, that we have to commit ourselves to. And I want to assure you today that that's the reason I'm here. I want to make certain that everyone here recognizes that this is not going to be uh, an occasion uh, I hope that was, was, uh, was enjoyable for sure and, uh, and, and uh, useful, uh, practical, uh, and inspiring altogether. But it will not end today. And that's the, the principal message that I want to, 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 leave, to leave with you, that uh, as the world has become smaller in one way, uh, our obligation as human beings to be more than what we would otherwise be uh, if we were restricting ourselves becomes even more important. And that means that we have to be able to speak with one another in order to know one another in a, in a transformed world of, of, of tr true globalization. The economics of knowing a foreign language uh, on the practical side of it is, uh, is without question now. Uh, uh, one of the uh, uh, hallmarks, I think, of, of today's students, if, if they are going to be able to succeed in the 21st century, is, uh, is like one, our, our Nancy and my young, young cousin, uh, now at Georgetown, who, who was raised to be able to speak Spanish and English simultaneously, went to immersion school uh, in Spanish uh, in San Diego. Uh, the immersion schools that we have now uh, in Hawaii that I was very pleased to be a part of uh, in terms of uh, origination of them uh, when I was in the legislature more than, more than two decades ago, um, almost three decades ago, <laughs> uh, to be more precise. And uh, uh, so there is a practical, uh, hardcore benefit uh, to, the, uh, to putting language at the center of our educational experience. And it's something that we need to, to uh, foster, we need to support. Um, uh, I, myself, am uh, always in awe 
of my wife's uh, capacity in this uh, language, or in this, in this area, the area of language, because her consuming passion, I don't know if some of you know this, her consuming pa compa uh, uh, passion is, is not me, it's French. <laughs> and, uh, uh, followed closely by Spanish. And, uh, <laughs> and then our dog, Canoa. <laughs> And, uh, and then uh, the uh, occasional designated driver. Yes, there she is now, cut, 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 kind of thing. So um, I, w I wanted to, to, as I move to a conclusion, and in fact, yeah, um, I wanted to indicate that I have a, a, a really a special place, uh, a special place in my heart uh, for language uh, because of my wife's love uh, for language. I am in the interesting position of uh, living with someone uh, for whom the declension of verbs is seen as a really interesting pastime. <laughs> and uh, I noticed the laughs are a little less uh, 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 intense uh, from before. Uh, but, what it, what it, but, it, but what it reminds me of, and, uh, and it, it again, I want to emphasize to you that we need to give our children the tools that they need and deserve and uh, access to, to uh, uh, language and uh, the uh, capacity to uh, uh, be in control of our lives through language is, is, is at the center of all this. That uh, the obligation that I feel uh, today is to take the culmination of the work that you've done today and when we are able to synthesize everything that's, that's summarized on the walls um, I can assure you that uh, this administration will, uh, will get to work on it and get to work with you. And uh, it's a great pleasure for me to uh, uh, conclude by uh, recognizing as well um, the contributions that have been made uh, in our state with Senator Kaka being here uh, and, and being honored today. Uh, I can remember very, very clearly uh, that when we first began to uh, recognize and understand that there was a renaissance of language underway in the Hawaiian community itself and in the broader Hawaiian community uh, of Hawaiine, that the encouragement came from and the support came from at that time from Senator Daniel Akaka. He, and I will say his brother as well, Reverend Akaka, Abraham Akaka, were among the uh, first in uh, our state uh, to encourage uh, the study of the Hawaiian language and to say that it was more than an opportunity to purloin words out of the cultural foundation of Hawaii, but rather that that was a, a, uh, a sign uh, on, on, on a path that we could, we could take towards a fuller understanding of what it meant to be a full human being. And that language was the key to that. And that uh, the language of that time, which had in some respects almost been lost, uh, if in fact not actually suppressed, was an opportunity for us to open a new world of understanding of ourselves as human beings. To give ourselves a more clear vision of what was possible for us to achieve and what our obligations to ourselves were as human beings. And the very richness of the languages of Hawaii and the cultures that they represented gave us an incredible melange of opportunity uh, to be able to recognize ourselves in each other, regardless of the foundation of, of racial or national or ethnic or or, or, or regional uh, origins and, and mixtures that we found here in Hawaii, all based on that, on that fundamental uh, uh, foundation uh, of the Polynesian heritage manifest in the language of Hawaii. And so when we talk about Hawaii now, we talk about a multiplicity of languages, all of which lead us to a greater and deeper appreciation of each other uh, as brothers and sisters. Uh, uh, not only on this planet, 
but here in paradise. So it's a great honor, uh, Senator Crockett, to be able to acknowledge uh, to these folks, who many of whom spend their professional lives as well as their personal commitments in the study of language and the utilization of language and the understanding of language as the medium of our humanity, uh, to be able to thank you uh, personally for your encouragement in this area and, uh, and the standard that you helped the rest of us to be able to set in uh, making sure that language and culture in Hawaii would not just be studied, but lived to the fullest extent of our human capacity. And for that, I thank you for the opportunity to be here with you and pledge my full support to the results, all, uh, every result coming from this summit today. Mahalo nui. Arigato gozaimasu. Thank you very much. Aloha. <laughs>